Today I wanted to talk about living in a van. Van dwelling is the technical term for it. I lived in a van on and off since 2012. And in doing so, I traveled around the country. Uh, the, the original reason I did it was because I, I was looking at rent. I was in Florida and realized that there was no no places that, that I wanted to stay. I, I, I was living with a guy who was the creepiest serial killer, <laughs> child molester type guy. And uh, I, I just wanted to get out. I, didn't wanted, I wanted to travel. I wanted the freedom. So I decided to buy a van. It was a full-size Dodge Ram 2500. And uh, put a little mattress in it and started living in it, living out of it. And so some of the, there are people that are interested in living in cars, uh, sleeping in cars, things like that, living on the road, taking RVs on the road, buses, all those kind of things. I, on the road, I've met a lot of those people, uh, driven around the majority of the southern U.S. and the western U.S. and uh, in the past few years. Um, some of the tips that I learned, I picked up, uh, some of the biggest things like when you, when you first go into a van uh, or in a car of any kind, you first want to look at what kind of car. The reason I picked a van over a larger vehicle like a bus or a uh, RV was because of parking mostly. Because when you go to, when you're out in the middle of the wilderness, first of all, there is no middle of the wilderness. It's all owned by somebody. But you, I mean, you can kind of park an RV on the side of the road out somewhere, but you're eventually, a cop or somebody is going to stop and see if you're okay because they're going to wonder why you're there. You can't stay there long term. Uh, it gets expensive in gas driving around all the time. So you have to try to figure out places that are stable for you to stay for at least a couple of weeks. Uh, a month is ideal, but it's, it's hard to do that with a larger vehicle. Um, You'll find with an RV or a bus, you can try parking in uh, store parking lots. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, when you look online, Walmart is the place that everybody tells you to go park and sleep, but they are really cracking down on it. Uh, I'm in Flagstaff, Arizona, and there, there's a couple, you know, they're a little more liberal here. There's, you know, with Oregon, when I was there, they're a little more liberal and things like that. But, you know, if you're in California, and a lot of other states and you're, you're parking at a Walmart, odds are you're going to get towed or at least have a police officer knock on your door in the middle of the night and make you leave, which I have had happen. Um, there's some, some stores like Target, Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that, they will usually at night, they'll have it posted that they don't want any overnight parking. But there are some places like grocery stores every once in a while you can find that'll let you park there. Uh, parks, depending on, <laughs> so a lot of city parks are closed at night as well. Some of them are even gated off and they have patrols around there. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure you just kind of keep your head down. Uh, if you are sleeping in your car, uh, try not to make too much noise, try not to make too much of a, a scene about you doing it. Um, you will tend, when you go to a, a, a city, you, you'll find that people who are homeless, essentially, uh, are all gathered in the same places. Parks are great places to find them, downtown areas. Uh, talk to them and figure out like where safe places to go at night if you don't know. Um, I know that it sounds weird to talk to homeless people, but I mean, really do. I talk to them all the time. Some of them are a little off. Some of them are pretty cool. Uh, you never know what you're going to get. A lot of the guys that I met in uh, Denver and Oregon mostly where I would be parking somewhere they would I'd talk to them hang out in the morning get some coffee and kind of get an idea and they were mostly retirees on fixed incomes uh, a lot of them were truckers and things like that where they traveled a lot and they just they, they were used to living on the road so they continued doing it which is kind of a beautiful thing um, using the bathroom uh, that's one of the reasons why <laughs> Walmart was a good place uh, McDonald's, some fast food places you can stay at, Denny's, places like that that are overnight, even bars you can park there. I mean, I wouldn't if you're a woman, uh, especially if you have to get out of your car for anything or if you can be visible. But um, I, I've slept in truck stops and places like that, but I'm not a big fan. You've got to go pretty far out of the way to do that. Uh, I like to go out in the middle of nowhere sometimes, but you know more often than not I'm staying around an urban area where there's Wi-Fi and things like that and 
restrooms, public restrooms of any kind that are open, that's that's where you you really start to realize that you're living in a little alternative lifestyle because your Maslow's hierarchy of needs will not really be met. Um, and using the bathroom is a daily thing that you do. And there, there are times you can mostly be on schedule, but there are times that, you know, things happen. You get a stomach bug or you get sick or whatever might go on. You ate something bad that didn't agree with you that day. But uh, for the most part, you know, it, it's okay. I would recommend keeping a bottle that you can pee into in some kind. Uh, if you're a woman, you're going to need some kind of a, like an oil, uh, little funnel that they make to put in the bottle to make sure that you, <laughs> you make it. Um, Gatorade bottles, the 32 ounce ones, are the ones I like to use because I never had to pee so much that I would overfill it. They're smaller, like 12 ounce bottles you can find, but every once in a while you might have to pee a little more than that, you never know. Um, I would also, uh, dry food is something that you would definitely, nuts, uh, crackers, things like that, that things that don't require cooking really to eat, uh, and those are, and are cheap that you can get in bulk are usually the, the best things to be able to sustain yourself while you're on the road. Uh, I also, I, I go to a lot of trade shows, so I was able to pick up a lot of, you know, free food <laughs> as I was going around, so it wasn't too much of a big deal. And a lot of times, you know, when, like when I was up in Oregon, uh, there was you know, a group of people where some people would go and fish, some people would go try to find some berries that were edible. Uh, there's wild berries everywhere in Oregon. And, um, you know, everyone would take care of each other. People would look out for each other. And I got to say, since I've lived in a car, <laughs> it's it's been my my reality of it versus what my vision of it was is I, I'd wanted to do it for a while but when I finally experienced it I, I it was a little bit different than I thought it was going to be there was a lot of things that you know it's just passing time is what the the hardest part is because once you get up you can move around get changed do a lot of stuff inside of the van but once you get out you're in public you're <laughs> I mean you don't have that that time to like go in the bathroom and look in the mirror you didn't you know go hang out on the couch for a minute, make yourself some cereal or whatever, breakfast, and get coffee, and wake up, and, you know, make yourself up before you, you go out into the real world. Um, you just, you wake up and <laughs> get dressed or whatever, and you're there, you're, you're out in public. It's, it takes a little, little getting used to. Uh, some of the places I, I love to park, uh, are hotels and apartment complexes for the most part. Uh, mostly because it's it's easy to get Wi-Fi, um, also because they're they're relatively quiet for the most part. I mean, people that are there are <laughs> they're usually there temporarily at the hotels and apartment complexes. You know, it's you're out in the parking lot in a visitor space. Don't take up anybody's actual space. You get towed, but you can stay for a week and uh, reach somebody's free Wi-Fi at some point. If not the apartment complexes, then you better learn how to how to do it. Um, the, I used my laptop in order to make money while I was on the road. Uh, a lot of people will try to, uh, find jobs that they can do while they're, you know, odd jobs. You, if you ever watch Into the Wild, I love watching that movie or reading the book even because it's, it's interesting to see how, like what, when you read that or see that and you think of, you know, I want to do that, but when you actually do it, you start to feel the struggle that that guy did. It's, it's a, it's a lot different than you would think it would be. So, finding a you know temporary work isn't all that easy. I don't know if you've ever gone to a place like DES to do that, and get day labor. But uh, yeah, you're, you're not going to get the greatest jobs. A, you're not going to get the greatest pay, and the be best working conditions. Uh, some people try doing yoga, uh, yoga teaching massage therapy, things like that. There's there's a lot of uh, other odds and end jobs, uh, hairstylists. Um, the, the problem with that is that you still have to, you know, get hired, you still have to market yourself. It's, I have a whole thing about entrepreneurship, freelancing and working from home that I'll, I'll do later, but it's, what I do is internet based, which is, you know, all I needed in order to make money and to get my money was a laptop. So, electricity and internet were the two most important things for me 
so what I did was I, I spent about $400, got a solar panel, a 100 watt solar panel, and a power inverter so that I could plug in my laptop and charge it. Uh, I, I originally had a power inverter plugged into the, um, for the first year, plugged into the uh, cigarette lighter, actually a year and a half. And that, I had to keep running the engine basically about three, four times a day, which was getting kind of bad for the environment. And it was, I hated having to, to run the engine just so I could you know, charge a laptop. It was ridiculous. So uh, it was like a huge Rube Goldberg device. So what I did was get you know, the solar panels so that, you know, even when I was in Oregon or Colorado during like the rainiest of seasons, it was still a pretty good amount where like, by, by 10 a.m. if I had killed the laptop all the way and the, the external battery that I had, um, I would, by 10 a.m., <laughs> I would have everything back up and running like at full power so I could get to work again. Um, then it became, like during the, the winter, the biggest problem is the cold, obviously, snow, sub-zero temperatures. So you want to get, if you're going to be staying in your car, you're going to want to get away from very cold areas, head south, head towards Florida and Arizona, which are, or towards the end of the coast, the California, where it's moderate temperatures most of the time. Um, during the summer, I would stay away from Phoenix, where I'd be in the winter, and come up to places like Flagstaff, or you know, drive around to all sorts of places. But uh, the hard part there is staying cool. Obviously, your car can get pretty hot, especially if you're not parked in the shade. Um, and so I had to find a way to park so where my front end was in the shade, and then the back end where the solar panel was was showing into the light, and that. That was the, I guess, the biggest issue that I had when I was trying to get everything going. Um, I have dated while I was living in the van. I've actually <laughs> slept with two women that were in the van. I kind of judged both of them, one a little less than the other, because, yeah, if we, we were drunk, A, and we had done it a few other places around the office first. Um, the... So... For the most part, when I was trying to date, though, it was it was a little hard. I would I would be honest. I would tell people I was living in a van. I'm not ashamed of it, but some people would take it as a as an adventure. Some people would take it as me being poor, which both were somewhat true. Um, I would still I still was able to maintain a pretty decent social life. One of the things I noticed was that a lot of my, my friends and family, when I would, you know, go visit them and crash in their couch for, you know, a couple of days, a weekend, uh, they would kind of judge me for it. They felt bad for me. You kind of got this thing where they, they pitied you. But, uh, you know, I, I, I don't care, honestly. I, it sucks a little bit, but <laughs> you kind of get used to it. I'm a whistleblower, so I've, I've had a lot worse things happen to me in my life. Um, I I also did it when I was going to school for a little while. I would park in the parking lot of the school, which was also ideal because I, I had, you know, a ID card that I could swipe to get into the bathroom. There's a cafeteria there, library. You can actually take a shower in there, their gym showers. Uh, a lot of sites online will tell you to get a gym membership so you can take a shower. Don't even bother. Uh, you can you can a take kind of like a sponge bath type thing which does keep you clean and B if you ever really felt that dirty you can just go and you know get a hotel and take a shower you know do that once or twice a month and you're still paying way less than you would for a gym membership uh, the gym membership idea I, I never I didn't even like gym memberships when I was <laughs> living in a house so I certainly wasn't gonna go for it when I was in a uh, in a car. I did work at a yoga studio for a while, so I, um, I worked at the front desk and I would take a shower there after, you know, I'd come in at like six in the morning do a Mysore practice of uh, Ashtanga yoga, and then I would, you know, take a shower and get ready and go to work. Um, there was a time where I had a bike in the van, which was, it's easier to have it on the outside, but, you know, at the same time, it's you have to worry about it getting stolen and so I 
I had a bike for a while, but then I, when I switched bands, I kind of left the bike in the other band. It's kind of a long story that's a whistleblowing aside to this. But uh, I eventually got into, I, I've lived in three bands now. The third one was a mini band, which I eventually got because the full-size bands had a lot more room inside, which was comfortable, but parking it, I looked, they obviously knew that I was sleeping in my band. Uh, in the minivan, I blacked out the windows, I just spray painted the inside of them so it looks like they're just really darkly tinted, uh, except for the front windows, obviously, and the back window, and that I just covered up with a blanket when I would, you know, needed some privacy, uh, put a sunscreen, uh, sunshade on the front windshield, and that's all you really need. Um, in order to, loneliness is one of the biggest things you'll experience when you're you're living in a van you'll start to kind of feel like a loser to be completely honest and i would that's where i you know keep in touch with people try to make sure that i was talking to somebody just to get over those times i mean my my career at the time was going well uh it is still now obviously but I'm, you know, at the time it was so that helped but uh yeah, uh, staying in contact with some people and, you know, just making sure that <laughs> I wasn't letting myself go stir-crazy. Uh, the laptop definitely helped in, in killing time and keeping your mind off the fact that you're, you know, kind of stuck in a small space. Living in a small space wasn't too bad, but, you know, you do have to do... That's why I started doing some yoga, some ground stuff, so that, you know, I can stay limber and keep myself... Uh, loose and in shape without withering and dying. Um, other than that, clothing, doing your laundry while you're you're living in a car, one thing I learned is that I would, you know, when I first started out, I would change my clothes every day. And, you know, I wanted to stay clean. I wanted to not feel like I was living in a car. And, you know, after a while, if you hit a point where you, you've got a couple days before you can afford to do your laundry or, you know, have the time to go out to go do because you have to go to the laundromat you got to sit there for a few hours make sure your stuff isn't stolen um so you know i would have a bunch of dirty clothes and I, at the end of the time when i ran out of clothes i would i would be wearing the same thing for a week anyways so i just started wearing the same clothes you know multiple times I, i'd figure out you know unless it was dirty unless i actually got it like severely dirty but for the most part that's how people lived in the 1800s anyways they, they didn't wash their clothes all the time they didn't even shower every day showering every day is actually bad for you but uh, yeah, it, that helped out. Uh, keeping a lot of Febreze, I, I made sure that I stocked up on all sorts of cleaning supplies, basically laundry detergent, uh, fabric softeners, uh, dryer sheets, soap, uh, all kinds of deodorants and toothpaste, things like that that don't go bad. And I was able to stock up on when I when I actually had the money to do it. And then. I didn't have to worry about it. All I had to worry about spending money on at that point was food and gas. Gas was expensive trying to keep the, uh, trying to move around a lot. Like when I was driving around, there was times where I'd, I'd go to a different state every day and it was costing me <laughs> like $30, $40 of gas every day. So that's where I had to start, you know, slowing things down and figuring it out and taking time to kind of explore the world and stop and smell the roses, which is really kind of the, the purpose of doing that anyways. Like you, you get this idea that you want to go on this grand adventure and go live on the road, but you're, what are you going to do? You're going to go to all the different wonders of the world, go to the Grand Canyon. You're not going to be able to camp there without paying some money for very long. Um, then what, go to the next national park and do the same thing all over again and eventually you're going to find your way back to a city. Uh, I've, I've done it in rural, urban areas, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I, I've done it in everything from sleeping on the actual bed that came with the, or the bench seat, whatever. Not bench seat, yeah, bench seat that came with the uh, van to hanging a hammock, <laughs> which was actually very comfortable, by the way. Um, hung the hammock on the inside of the van and was able to sleep on that. I would, I would definitely recommend getting, if you're going to have to move into a van, your clothes and your cleaning supplies and food are the three things that are like the most major things that are going to, to help you out. 
if it's if it's something where you're doing it in a like a rush, um, you just happen to come across this, I guess, because <laughs> you were searching in an emergency. I would take anything small and valuable that you can sell, and uh, take that with you so that you have some extra money. You never know how much money you're gonna need. It it it, it sounds like a money saving thing to live in a van, but it really it's you spend a lot of money. You spend a lot of money on things where like like you cooking and, and refrigeration and things like that that you normally wouldn't you take for granted but you don't have access to anymore so you've got to you know go out to eat more often you can't really store too much food um, so there are some challenges to it but overall uh, I, I loved it I'll do it again honestly I probably will um, Right now I'm in a house, obviously, but I, and I love this house, by the way. I love living in a house too, but the, just the freedom of getting rid of, of, of rent payment, it was just, it was nice. It was, it was exactly what I needed at the time when I was first starting out as a bootstrapped entrepreneur. So if you have a goal that's beyond that, that you're living in a van specifically as a temporary means to get to a goal, then I highly recommend it. If you're doing it because you have no other option, good luck with it, but definitely try to get out of it as soon as possible. It's not a long-term solution. Um, other options while you're, you know, while you're doing that, you can look for rooms for rent temporarily and uh, on a place like Craigslist, Airbnb even. Uh, you can stay for, you know, a night or two some places just to break the monotony or you know, get off the road for a little bit. Uh, there's definitely some noise levels. Uh, if, you, if you're not used to sleeping where there's where you can't fully control all the light and all the sound, uh, sometimes, you know, even the wind and weather would, would hit, it hits the roof of a car more than it hits the, <laughs> the roof of a house. You feel it more. But, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about living in a van, I, I have been answered. I hopefully try to cover as much as I possibly could come up with, but uh, let me know. Leave a comment or something below, and I will see what I can do. Other than that, my name is Brian Penny. I'm a bank whistleblower, and it's been nice talking to you.